Master Chef is back. Hundreds have auditioned, and now the best 40 amateur cooks are through. Fire! If you get drunk, then I might get through. Each week, 10 new contestants battle for just four places in Friday's quarter-final. I think this is the best pudding I've eaten this year. Only the strongest will make it through to the final challenges. Each one has to be perfect. Yes! I've polished my spoon, I've loosened my belt, I'm ready to go. The taste buds are ready, buddy. It's time to rock. These five amateurs all think they've got what it takes to become Master Chef. But at the end of today's heat, only two will become quarter finalists. Welcome to Master Chef. Good to see you. This, your first test, is your calling card. One dish that tells Greg and I something about you as a cook. At the end of this, Greg and I will each choose our favourite dish. Mm -hmm. Those two cooks go straight through to the next round. The other three cooks will have to cook again for their place in the competition. And by the looks of you lot, it's going to be a very lively and very exciting day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, 15 minutes. Let's cook. I wouldn't have taken time out of my life and gone and left my kids and my husband on their own, like fending for themselves. If I didn't think that I could go all the way. Fran? <laughs> yeah. You look like you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, I am, actually. I'm cooking chicken paprika with uh, spetzel. What's spetzel? It's a German pasta, but it's more like a dumpling. When I cook it, my kids go, mmm. How old are your kids? Um, 13, 11, 9 and 6. You've got four kids? I have four kids. Oh, my word. You are a busy lady, I Fran. am. That's how I like it, though. By the sounds of Fran, she knows what she's up to. She's making us paprika chicken and she's serving it with spatzla, a German Austrian little tiny dumpling her grandmother taught them to her. They're delicious, I love them if they're done really well. If they're not, that's like eating fried wallpaper paste. You've got 35 minutes left. To be a MasterChef contestant is like one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my entire life almost as exciting as Liverpool winning the Champions League in 2005. This is just unbelievable. Are you making us burgers? I am making you burgers today. This type of cooking is what I do. It's simple, it's straightforward, but it just tastes great. I want to see, when you take a bite out of that burger, that you have a smile on your face. Mate, I tell you what, I absolutely love burgers. What makes yours good? do quite a nice, like, spicy jalapeno relish, which I really like. And there's a nice little mayo to sort of cool it off on the side. We all understand the burger, but we all know how we feel it should be cooked. They're monsters. Burger and chips, it's risky. It's very therapeutic for me to cook. The smells, the ambience of me cooking, maybe a glass of wine, and, you know, it's just, I love it. Alan, you're wearing a bowler hat. That's right. Why? I always wear hats. I'm known for wearing hats. I have, I have 150 hats. Fair enough. What, what are you making? Well, I'm doing um, a lobster and langoustine, and I'm doing a sweet potato mash with chives. How much cooking do you do, Alan? It's a social thing for me. I like having dinner parties, so it's like bringing people together. And usually, if, even if I'm going to cook for two people, it usually ends up enough for, like, 30. There's a sense of glamour about Alan. He likes his hats, he likes his shoes, he's got a trademark. Let's see if his food does the same. There are 20 minutes left. I'm really looking forward to meeting John and Greg. My main ambition, actually, is to get Greg to make his um, 
ubiquitous sound of whoa, it's something that I managed to cook for him. What do you do right now? I am a PhD student. Uh, I study chemistry at the University of Manchester. What crossover do you see between chemistry and cooking? Chemistry is a lot like cooking. I mean, you take a lot of ingredients, you mix them together, you heat them up, and with a little bit of know-how and a bit of refinement, you can actually make something out of it. Matthew's a true scientist. He's following a recipe and he's following it to the letter. He's doing a paella, stripped back and changed to something more elegant. Squid cooked in rioja. Mussels, he's going to flame so they're smoky inside. I want rich, stubby rice and I want the texture of seafood. I'm 25, this is probably the last chance before the real responsibilities start that I can actually give it a go and just see if I can make a dream come true or even if I just get told I can cook, I'll be happy. But I just wanted to see if I could do it. Ella, what are you making? Um, I'm doing a squid ink black pasta tagliatelle with a prosecco and crab sauce topped with calamari. Why, of all the dishes in the world, would you kick off MasterChef with this one? Because I really love cooking Italian food. I have friends and family out in Italy. And Where? Tuscany and San Donato. Right, you guys, no need to cook. I found the winner. You're free to go. If it goes wrong, it's going to be brilliant, isn't it? Ella's cooking is a black tagliatelle flavoured with squid ink. Do you know what? If everything else screws up, I don't care because I did it. I want freshness, I want vibrance, and it could be delicious as long as it's not over seasoned. How much longer? You've got about four minutes to get your food on your plates, please. We're off. We're going to start assembly. Chips. Ow. I'm feeling very confident, actually. And maybe a little bit overconfident. <laughs> That's it, stop! Stop, 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 Ella. <laughs> Sorry. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, that looks yeah. lush. This is like the best restaurant ever. I know, right? <laughs> you go to a restaurant <gasps> and you're normally Look at yours. disappointed. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? I can't believe you managed to do all of that in an hour and 15 minutes. That's I can't. insane. Have you seen all the stuff on yours? That's ridiculous. Mama Four and teacher Fran is serving rolled chicken thigh with a sage stuffing, slivers of crispy chicken skin, a paprika sauce, German spetzel dumplings, and a pickled cucumber salad. You have to give yourself the time to put on the plate with a bit of grace. <laughs> I particularly love that smoky sauce. That's very, very good indeed. Love the crispy chicken skin. Enjoy the dumplings. But don't feel as if I've got one dish. Feel like I've got a collection of some of your favourite things okay. to eat. What this says to me is you've been cooking for your family and your children and you don't season your food enough. Because that whole thing could be an explosion of magnificent things. Mm -hmm. More nutmeg in the spatza, more pepper in the stuffing, more sage in the stuffing. Bring it alive. Thank you. They're absolutely right. I have been cooking for my family. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm half glad that came across. So, yeah, I feel good. 27 year old Sam has made a calling card of griddled chuck steak burger topped with streaky bacon and melted cheddar cheese in a brioche bun with hot jalapeno relish, mayo and twice cooked chips. It's one of the most stylized burgers I've seen and uh, I applaud you for that, well done. Your, your, your patty's cooked, it's a decent burger, you've made decent mayonnaise and I like your relish that is sweet and then hot at the end. Well done. Your chips, cloud-like in the middle, crispy on the outside with a lovely sharpness of vinegar. Your mayonnaise is good and strong with garlic. Your chutney is a bit of a surprise, almost like a, a chilli jam. But I have issue with your burger patty in that it's dry. As for your chips and your dressings, I think they're great. Good. That's my personality on a plate. I like to have a bit of a laugh. I enjoy a drink with the lads, and that's the type of food that we'd have on a Friday night. 
I'm not very complicated. I'm pretty straightforward. <laughs> Hairstylist Alan has cooked lobster and longestines in a lemon, garlic and herb butter served with sweet potato and chive mash and a red pepper garlic sauce. Where's the lobster, mate? In the middle. Oh, look at that. Sweet potato is, is far too strong for me. I find the lobster slightly undercooked. I'm happy enough with the longestine. But Alan, I don't think that works at all. Okay. I'm really sorry, mate. That's fine. As well as your seafood is cooked, your sweet potato is like this sort of big damp cloak that is just enveloping the whole lot and taking it somewhere completely different from fresh seafood. I've never really cooked for one. I've always cooked for like more many people, but I've learned from it and I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Chemistry PhD student Matthew has made his version of Spanish paella with squid rings slow braised in Rioja, flame smoked mussels, cod cheeks, king prawns and smoky chorizo. I like that. Four different bits of fish in there, all cooked properly, and your rice is cooked properly, and you manage to get flavour into there, and, uh, and I like it. I do like it. Well done, Matthew. Your shellfish is all cooked really well, but for me, the whole thing's a bit dry. It almost comes on your plate like a cake. It's like you've deconstructed it, but haven't reconstructed it. I like your scientific approach. Some of the things haven't quite gone to plan. Glad it's over, yeah. If I have to cook again this afternoon, it's not the end of the world. Every opportunity to cook in this competition is going to help me improve, so we'll just see how it goes. Last up is account manager Ella, who served black squid ink tagliatelle with a crab, prosecco and clam sauce topped with crispy calamari. That's very nice. Okay. Your sauce is citrusy, it still tastes of sweet crab. I love the squid on top. It's a nice dish. It's delicious. What you've done is you've realised that to make a bowl of pasta come alive, the sauce has to be potent. I'd be very, very happy sitting by the sea in Italy and eating all of it. You like my food, yay! <laughs> I'm just really, really happy that they know that I can cook, to be honest. I'm just relieved it's over. <laughs> Do you know what? Send me home now. I'm happy. Well done. Uh, that was a good start. So we get to choose one dish each, and the maker of that dish goes straight through to the next round. I've chosen the dish that actually I would like to have for my lunch. And that dish is Sam's Burger and Chips. Well done, mate. <laughs> My favourite dish? It's cooked by Ella. Thank you. Congratulations, thanks very much. You two can go, off you go. Well done, well done. We want you to cook again. This we call a reinvention test. We want you to use the main ingredients that you use with your calling card dish, but make us a completely different dish using any of the stuff from this wonderful larder behind us. At the end of this, two of you will be joining Ella and Sam. One of you will be leaving the competition. One hour, ladies and gentlemen. Let's cook. Alan's main ingredient from his calling card is a lobster. 
when the MasterChef application popped up on your laptop, do you wish now you'd have moved to another site? No, definitely not. No matter what happens, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad for the experience. What, what lesson did you learn from the last round? As you said, I've got a sweet tooth. Yes. So I think I concentrated more on the sweet than the savoury. If I balance the two together, then I might be all right this time. Alan's got his lobster to make chop suey. Chop suey is a lovely idea, and I want a dish which has refinement from Alan. If he can do that, I'll take my hat off to him. You've had 20 minutes, all right? Fran's main ingredient is chicken thighs. I mean, that's kind of how I work my kitchen. I look in the cupboards, look in the freezer, look in the fridge, what have I got? And then I make something with what I've got. That's where I think I'll probably do best. What are you making that's going to secure your master chef place? Uh, chicken and tarragon pie. It's important to you, is it, that you go through? It's more important because my kids see me achieving and following my dreams and I want them to do the same thing, so I have to go at it full throttle. <sighs> Pastry's going horrendously wrong, of course. Half an hour ago, Fran's pastry case has just gone in the oven. The filling's not ready to go just yet, and I think she's struggling. And I hope she hasn't bitten off more than she can chew. Matthew's main ingredients are prawns, squid, and mussels. Matthew's doing an oriental dish of some kind, I'm not quite sure which. We've got some sweet and sour mussels, we've got some prawns which have been marinated, we've got some squid. You can do anything you want with that lovely seafood. But right now, Matthew's getting himself a little bit in a pickle. Why do you look so downbeat? Because I am working off the top of my head. As you know, I like to have a procedure and I like to know what I'm doing, so... Uh, Is that because you're a scientist? I think so. We never just walk in and mix things together at random, so uh, that always ends badly. You've got five minutes left. Are you going to be ready in five minutes? I'm going to be ready. That's it. Time's up. <sighs> Dear God. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Smile. Fun. <laughs> Alan, up you come, please. After overpowering his lobster with sweet mash, Alan is now serving it in a chilli, garlic and ginger chow mein with soft and crispy rice noodles. I don't like the fried noodles, they're not cooked. I do like, though, the lobster in your soft noodles with chilli and a little bit of uh, sesame. OK, thank you. For me, that whole thing needs more sauce. More soy, more ginger, more powerful chinese type flavours. The flavours you've got are nice. But I want something more than nice. I want bold. I enjoyed that. I've got good, um, good feedback this time. But, you know, yeah, I feel good. Fran's original dish featured chicken in a paprika sauce. She's now serving it in a short crust pastry pie with a tarragon and fennel sauce on top of pan fried black cabbage and lardons. Oh, look at that. I asked you to give your food a bit more welly. You've done that. What I really like in there is I love the creaminess and richness of that sauce, along with that aniseed tingle of tarragon with the really lovely moist chicken. Reinvention in an hour, I'm mightily impressed. Really yummy, lovely pastry, lovely filling. Cabbage, salty bacon, mate, it's great food. Oh, yeah. It's great food. <laughs> Better pies than you get at most football stadiums, that's for sure. Oh, I would hope so. <laughs> I took what they said last time and I adjusted and happy days. Last up is Matthew, 
who has used the mussels, prawn and squid from his last dish to make a honey sweet and sour mussel broth served with flash fried chili squid, soy and garlic marinated prawns, rice noodles and a fennel salad. Need a finger bowl mate with this dish. Your noodles are cooked, your shellfish is cooked, prawn slightly overcooked, but the broth isn't particularly wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet flavour and that's pretty much all I get. Okay. There's some work in here which I like. The mussels are cooked beautifully. Little bits of chilli floating around. Don't use honey in Asian inspired dishes. Yeah. It's far too strong for them. Yeah. It's a revisit to the laboratory for you, I think, Matthew. I'm a little bit disappointed with that one, actually. I saw the ingredients and, and just went with it. So perhaps I could have done something slightly different with it, but you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Right. We've seen you three now cook twice, and we have got a difficult decision to make. We need to go off and now and have a proper chat. Thank you very much. Thanks. I am really, really impressed with Fran. She's got the makings of a very, very good contestant. She didn't do badly at all in her calling card round with that rolled chicken, but the work she just did there, an invention test, made us a really lovely chicken pie. John, that's super work. She's got to go through. Fran's great. Matthew's calling card round was a, was a paella. That squid, which he cooked in red wine, was a wonderful idea. I liked the flavour of the rice. I liked the mussels that were running through the paella. So I'm not sure with Matthew. I, I know he can cook shellfish. I'm a bit disappointed by, by that broth in the reinvention test. The broth was flavoured with honey, and that honey really overpowered the rest of the dish. You said that with scientists, they need to keep on trying things out and making mistakes along the way before they perfect it. And it looks that way to me with Matthew. I think he's got some promise, but is he good enough? I'm, I'm hopeful that I can scrape through and redeem myself later on with, with a bit of demonstration that I, I can make up for those errors. Alan's calling card I just did not like at all. Completely enveloped in the thick sweetness of sweet potato. However, Alan did a much better reinvention test than he did a calling card. Lobster and noodles, what a great idea. But for me, a big bowl of lobster noodles should be big and strong and steamy and fragrant. It needed a little bit more care. I don't know, if I, if I go, I go. I did my best. I'd be a bit gutted, but c'est la vie. <laughs> Fran we love, and she's going straight through. Who are we going to have between Matthew and Alan? Yeah, which one has the knowledge? Which one has the skill? Two of you will be joining Ella and Sam. One of you is leaving the competition. The contestant leaving the competition. Is Alan. Alan, good to meet you, sir. Thanks, Alan. What is that? Good job, Alan. Yeah, good job, Thank you. It's me. <laughs> I certainly will be happier to get back to doing the cooking how I cook, you know, basically for lots of people. I'll look back on it with fondness because I really, I really enjoyed it. Hey! It's been such a long day. I feel like your family now. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. You live to cook another day. Well done. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome back. You know you're cooking for a quarter-final place, don't you? Yeah, and two of you will make it and two of you won't. And there's a sense of occasion about today because you are cooking for three MasterChef champions. 
Tim Anderson, Stephen Wallace and James Nathan. Dare to dream today and you could be joining those three in that dining room. You have got two courses. One hour for your main course, 15 minutes later your dessert. Timing is paramount. At the end of this, sadly, two of you are going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. treat it very much like a sports match. I know that's so bad that you shouldn't treat a cooking competition like a sports match, but it's the same one. You've done all the preparation. You just want to go, go in, go for it. See what happens. I'm going to do a herb risotto with a few wild mushrooms inside with a fillet of sea bass on top and a green pesto. <laughs> what are the tomatoes for? I suppose maybe a little bit of the tomato juice I like going through. I think it sort of helps a little bit. Tomato juice going through what? Through the risotto, through the fish, through the cheese, through the pesto? It just sort of bring, helps, bring it, helps bring it all together, really. Through everything? Yeah, it sort of helps bring it all together. Uh, dessert is a Portuguese custard tart. Pastage de nata. Correct. It was actually inspired by uh, a holiday I went on. One of my mates, Stag Doos, we went on to Portugal. And I know that most people have, like, bacon and eggs when they're hungover to death, but I found one of these Portuguese custard tarts. And how do you feel about uh, a place in the quarter-final? I sort of to think, I'm going to stay in the present, and if, if I cook as well as I know I can cook today, I'll get into the quarter-final. This is a mile away from Sam's Burger and Chips. That was classic simplicity and I loved it. This is one big, big dish. I'm a little bit concerned that we've got a little bit too much on the plate. You've had 20 minutes. It's hard being away from the kids, but I would certainly extend that time away and make those sacrifices and more for a quarter-final place. I believe I can do it. I, can, I believe I can be Master Chef. Fran, yes. what are you making? I'm making a tagliatelle with a prawn bisque and fennel. It's got a little parmesan crisp on top of it. And I'm going to make a pear and chocolate tart. Do you know what Stephen Wallace's winning dessert was? No. It was poached pears and chocolate and ice cream. Uh oh. It was Greg's favourite dessert of all time. Okay. How firm is the custard that the pear sits in? Um, it's varied in practice. <laughs> At least you're being honest. Yeah, well, I, I'm not a recipe person. I don't follow recipes. I just throw it in, the quantities. It's approximate. When I was doing all my planning, I had to weigh all the packets and then weigh them again afterwards. That's genius. A prawn bisque with pasta. I think it's a lovely, lovely thing. The success of that dish is completely relying on the quality of her bisque. <sighs> Oh, let's try and get some of it in here, eh? Dessert, a little tart, baked custard, poached pear on top, served with rich chocolate. That could be so thick and sweet that you might not want to eat it. You've got 25 minutes left. The most important thing to me today is to show John that it, it wasn't a fluke, um, and also to show that I can cook, basically. <laughs> I'm doing pan-fried venison with a celeriac and sweet potato dauphinoise, roasted balsamic beetroot, and then a banana tart tatin with a cinnamon chantilly cream. I wanted to put my own take on the tart tatin, and I love bananas, which is why I decided the banana tart tatin was a little bit different. Um, and I've tried it, and everybody really liked it at home, so... <laughs> you sound and look a little stressed. <laughs> well, it's an hour and 15 minutes to cook for four people that you know, finalists and master chef judges, so I think anyone would be a little bit stressed. <laughs> I like the idea of Ella's venison with the beetroot with balsamic. What's troubling me is a creamy sweet potato and celeriac together. We've got a banana ta ta ta, puff pastry, caramel, and bananas. How that's going to come together and not be too sweet and too heavy, I'm not quite sure. You have 15 minutes left. It is a little bit of a relief to be cooking my own dishes. I've had an opportunity to practice these. I know where they're going to go. These dishes are classic, but I'm bringing modern techniques that make them easier. Matthew's menu reads pan-fried halibut, beurblanc and samphire. What we've actually got is something very, very different altogether. A piece of halibut which has been sous vide first and then cooked into a water bath. He's making it a beurblanc, but he's making it with the mussel juice. So actually, it's quite a complex dish. 
dessert, classic apple tartar tart. I really like the idea. His vanilla ice cream is more of a parfait, and then he's added agar to it. Agar is a thickening agent. Complex, scientific, but will it taste good? This scientific world you live in yeah. is influencing your dishes completely, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. I'm feeling quite confident that they should come together. The things that the techniques that I'm using are in a scientific basis. You know, cooking the fish sous vide means that I should make sure that the fish is cooked as fish should be cooked. There's not really the human error element of me standing there too long at the hob. Ten minutes left. Time is uh, of the essence here. We're on track. We're on time. <laughs> I really want to see big flavors. I'm not interested in presentation at this point, or ever, maybe. Um, <laughs> as long as something sort of makes me sit up and go, ooh, then I'll, I'll be pleased. It's very important in this early stage to make things taste nice. No random, bizarre combinations. Just, you know, good, simple things going together well. That, that's what I'd be looking for. I'm looking to see some little sparks of brilliance. To impress on MasterChef, it takes flair, it takes in creativity, it takes individuality, and it takes balls. Five minutes on your main course. Five minutes. Sam is cooking a grilled sea bass and herb risotto, roasted cherry tomatoes, and pesto. Sounds delicious. But I like a risotto to be quite loose, and it should just be a lovely, creamy texture. It's pretty difficult, actually. You only got two minutes left. You should be getting food on the plates by now. Think about it, take your time. We're getting there. It's better than I imagined it. <laughs> Keep going, Sam. It's a good start. <laughs> it is. It's looking good, Sam. Your guests are waiting. Bit of pesto and we're done, aren't we? Yeah. Hey, pesto. Hey, pesto. Right, we should be serving now, Sam. OK. Come on, you've got to go. What are you doing yeah. there? Just a touch. Come on, Sam. We're good off. Good. Let's go. Sam, it's not even about. Go and take it to the, the wrong door. The guests. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm so sorry if that was a little bit late. <laughs> not at all. It's okay. You've got a pan fried fillet of sea bass on a chervil, tarragon, and parsley, and a little bit of mushroom risotto with some roasted tomatoes and a basil pesto. I really hope you like it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you very much. Thanks, man. It smells amazing. The garlic and basil coming off of that plate is very, very enticing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Gee whiz. Mm. 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 The herbs are incredible. This is so tasty. The fish is really well cooked. Really well cooked. What's amazing about it is that there's a lot going on, but they all come together so nicely. Mm. They balance each other out. Everything was delicious. Like, that's just the bottom line. Pesto's well made, fish is well cooked, risotto is well made. However, I believe we have two dishes on a plate. The risotto wins in an arm wrestle, they don't match, but they're well made. The pesto with those roast tomatoes is a lovely, lovely thing. All nicely made, all really well seasoned, all really well cooked, but it's fighting against each other. Should your tarts be in the oven now? Yeah. Sam's dessert is Portuguese custard tart with caramel. That sounds rather tasty. If it's a custard, obviously the cooking temperature has to be right. If it's overdone, it'll be scrambled eggy. So that'll take a bit of skill. That said, if it's right, it's going to be fantastic. Is your custard set? Yeah? Yeah. You've got three minutes. Yeah. And your caramel's not quite ready. It's nearly there. What colour's caramel? It's coming. It's nearly changed to colour now. Just a minute. OK. All right, good. Nice. Yay! That's nice. Your caramel's the colour of apricot. 
It's a light, vibrant, summery caramel. I see. Right. Should be going by now, Sam. Yeah. What do you want it to stick to the side of the tart? Is Just that... to rest on the side of the tart. OK, mate. You've done it. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Off we go. Well done, Sam. Thank you. Didn't I'll swing that door. <laughs> Here you have a variation on a Portuguese custard tart. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Thank Thanks, you ever Sam. so much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. I am a little worried about this caramel on top, which is still hot and kind of squidgy, <laughs> which is a funny texture for caramel. Whoa. Custard eruption. I've got too much dough, I've got too much oh. pastry, and there's not enough custard, and it's not rich enough for me. And the caramel is kind of sticking to my choppers and not doing it. My dentist won't be happy. I think texturally it's a bit off. The custard's not quite luscious. Sorry to say, but it was, it was very flat in taste. It doesn't seem like it's from the same chef, to be honest. The, the, the custard's curdled and the pastry's not cooked, and the caramel's not caramel. Whoa! It's not very successful, is it? It is really not nice at all. Orange-flavoured scrambled eggs in raw pastry with cinnamon. That is hard. Do you know what? When you sit down and 20 seconds after you finish that, you just think, that was so much fun. It is just... that was so much fun. <sighs> I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm delighted that it's over, actually. <laughs> Fran's doing the prawn tagliatelle with prawn and saffron bisque. The prawns are going to go over if I don't watch it. Um, the parmesan crusted fennel. All sounds delightful. I love fennel with shellfish. It's a perfect marriage. Completely just blended half my fennel instead of uh, using it. Oh, my God, that one's tiny and a mess. Where's the fennel? It's very much hidden and very tiny. <laughs> Beautiful, don't you think? Are we ready? Um, no, I'm not ready. What about a little clean-up of the, of the, of the pasta bowls know, when they go out? Do you know what? Fair. I did clean them up. Right, come <laughs> OK, can we go? Let's go. OK. Off you go. Thank you. You have tagliatelle in a prawn bisque with prawns and a kind of a failed fennel parmesan crisp underneath. So I shouldn't have said that because I might have got away with it. <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank lovely. You. Thanks. Enjoy, I hope. It's kind of thrown in there, isn't it? <laughs> it's not the most amazing placing up, but I'm sure it's going to taste great. Mm. Yeah. The pasta's delicious, the, the bisque is lovely, really rich, lovely flavours, but still delicate. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, balanced, warming bowl of comfort food. I enjoyed eating it. What more can I uh, say? Lovely dish. Fran's pasta is made beautifully, I really like it. I like those prawns as well. The sauce tastes to me of fennel and tomato sauce. <laughs> Fran is cooking a chocolate and brandy vanilla pear tartlet with cream. Pears and chocolate is really lovely, but then it needs a really crisp, lovely sort of short crust pastry. Five minutes you got. I'm on fire. Do you want that chocolate to set in there? I'm hoping so. It firms up when it cools, but there's no time for cooling right now. If I just put them in the fridge, eh? And what's what, burning? Yeah, what's steaming away in there? That is the uh, syrup. Oh, it's too burnt. Smell it. It's done. Got another it's pan? You've only got to get some sugar, haven't you? How long have you got? Not long enough, I don't think. Let's try it. Got three minutes left. OK, thank you. Get hot. You've got a minute and a half. Yeah. OK, that's it. Um, that is starting to go, so it might be ready. We'll just get these out. 
and plated up. Fran, do you ever yes. stop talking? Not really, no. Whoa. Just to make that all pretty on the top. Walk. I know, why am I running? OK, in front of you, you have a pear and chocolate tart with brandy. Thanks. Well, the smell of the vanilla coming off of there is incredible. Mm. I think the pastry is absolutely exceptional. It's got real snap to it and it's, got, it's containing a, you know, a really liquidy chocolate. I quite like it. Um, and I, I do really like the brandy in there, which isn't just boozy heat, there's, there's fruitiness from it as well. I kind of love that dark, haunting chocolatiness. It's quite a decadent dessert, actually. She's made it very, very rich, which I think is really quite exciting. Gorgeous. It's a really sexy dessert. Mmm. The pastry is really well done. The chocolate tastes heavenly. Good flavours from her. John, that's good. It was manic, um, so I feel like I've just come out of a tornado. I'm just proud I've done it. Ella's doing pan-fried venison steak with celeriac and sweet potato dauphinoise and a red wine jus. Um, venison is one of my favourite meats. And, and, you know, a nice little interesting twist, celeriac and sweet potato dauphinoise. Sounds like a good fun thing. Mate, you've got three minutes. Brilliant. Don't burn yourself. I can't promise that, to be honest. <laughs> Please. Please. That's all right. Right. How much time do I have? 90 seconds, Ella. Is this the last bit? Yeah. Wow, that smells sharp. Yeah, it will, it will work, trust me. As long as you've told us it will work, we're sold. <laughs> Good. Stop shaking. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> yes. There you go. Well done, Ella. Thanks. Right, OK. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right, here we go. I've done um, a pan-fried venison steak with a celeriac and sweet potato dauphinoise, um, a red wine jus, and um, some balsamic roasted beetroot. Oh, wonderful. Ooh. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I love the look of this. I think it looks really well considered and a big hunk of venison. Oh, look at the size of that. <laughs> That's Beauty. a G, right? It's lovely. There's lovely, lovely herbiness in the, in, in, the, in the jus that's got sort of thyme and rosemary in there. There's a really nice sort of perfume celeriac taste to the dauphinoise. So, yeah, no, really good all in all, I think. The jus is lovely. The jus is really meaty, lots of umami. It's, yeah, it's lovely. The venison is really nice. I think it's just about perfectly cooked. The dauphinoise has kind of curdled slightly, but it is nice to eat. I'm not hungry, and I'm going to eat quite a lot of it. Mm. I really like that beetroot, sour, sharp, quite crunchy. The venison is beautifully cooked. The sauce is really beautifully made. I want seasoning. I want lots more pepper on that venison. A couple of technical issues, and I think that's because she's pushed for time. But nice ideas and nice flavours. 15 minutes left. Right. But your tartar tans aren't in yet. No, I need to put them in. Pastry? Pastry is rolled out. How long does a pastry take to cook? I'm hoping it will be 15 minutes. Ella, for her dessert, is cooking banana tart tatan with cinnamon chantilly cream. Now, I'm a big fan of tart tatan, but banana is an interesting one. I may eat my words, but I... there, there could be issues there. You've got a minute. Is that cooked? I hope so. I'm going to see now. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This one's a bit dodge. Right, stick it back in the oven, do the other three, bring it out last. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, let's get you down. 
sorry for whoever has that. Interesting she's a banana. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm ever going to do it again now after today. Really? <laughs> do the last plate as well. Oh. Come on. Oh, dear. You've done this dish before? Yeah, 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 and it went absolutely perfectly. Just hide, right. hide all the sins. Oh, do I have to serve this? Oh, oh well, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You had what was to be an excellent tart to tan, but unfortunately, somewhat disastrous in the kitchen. <laughs> I've done um, a banana tart to tan with a pecan brittle and a, a cinnamon cream, chantilly cream. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. It looks a bit wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, I think some big mistakes have happened. Mm. I've just had some of the banana. That's really starchy. Oh. Yeah, it's just not come together at all, this dessert. Um, the pastry even has got a sort of savoury taste. It's not even sweet. There's not a lot going on here that's to be praised. The pastry has sort of had promise, but it's sort of gone a bit flat and looks a bit stodgy and pale. It isn't a pleasurable dessert, I'm, I'm sorry to say. The tart itself, I think, is a write-off. It's far too sweet, far too thick. I mean, pastry on top of sugar, on top of cooked banana. It's stuck to both sets of my teeth at the moment. I won't be able to remove that until I take my teeth out. It's sort of dry and woody like a parsnip when you eat it. But it's also sweet. It's really disconcerting. It plays with your head completely. I'm so mad at myself right now. I could just punch myself in the face. I'm furious. The tart to tan, unfortunately, just didn't go the way I wanted it to today, which is annoying because it has never let me down before. <laughs> oh, that's an episode I won't watch, that's for sure. <laughs> Five minutes, Matthew. Matthew's uh, cooking the halibut with samphire, shrimp, clam and mussel sauce, and I, I've got to say that dish is really sort of up my river. You've got mussels and you've got clams, and they really exude lots of salty liquids when you cook them. There is a slight danger of saltiness in here. Happy Matthew. Ah. Oh, Matthew. Give that one to me and John. Yeah. All right. Happy? Apart from dropping the fish, that was a bit of a disaster. OK, Mr Artiste. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Matthew. Right, let's go. Well done, son. Thank you. Good dish. Nice dish. Well done. Ooh. Hello. So we have a pan-fried fillet of halibut with a beurre blanc made with the shellfish and some samphire. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. You've got the sort of white protein seeping out of the seams of the flesh and it kind of means that the fish is going to be dry maybe. Mm. He's done something really strange. Try the bottom of the potato because I think there's sugar all over it. Ah, oh, that's just that weird. Horrid. In a different dish, the sugar potato <laughs> might be really good, but it throws everything else off. <laughs> it's really mad. It wor it's worrying me that. <coughs> the fish is cooked really, really nicely. I like those little tiny grey shrimp around the outside. As for the rest of it, I'm really not impressed. Why is it sweet? It's like a, it, it's getting a nice little taste of vanilla and sugar. He caramelised his potatoes. What? Matthew's dessert, we have an apple tart tatan with vanilla ice cream. Well, gee whiz. Uh, there's nowhere to hide there, that's for sure. The ice cream hasn't quite set yet. There's no apparent embellishments or anything. That's going to be hard for him to get that absolutely perfect. The ice cream hasn't set this time, which is weird. What are you going to do if we haven't got ice cream? It will make a nice tasting cream Yeah. on the side. Would it? Yeah.
you. Yep. With three minutes to go, however that ice cream is, I think it needs to get served up. Yep. Could be ice cream, could be cream. How dare it? It could probably do with another <laughs> five minutes. That looks all right. It's solid as a rock. It's going to melt it up. Yeah. There we are. Nice. One. There you go. Right. There we are. Good. All done? Yep. Done. Good lad. Thank you. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Hello again. So we have just a classic tart to tan with some vanilla ice cream. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't know, it looks like my grand's apple pie with the lid taken off and not given to me, and then there's just some kind of splat of ice cream. It's pretty poor. What's this? Mm. Something really weird about this. The apples are overcooked while not mm. being caramelized enough. Uh, they're also not sweet enough, so it has a sort of savory impression. I kind of want it, I want to have it like with pork. The, the ice cream is, is almost warm. Yet it's still set, and I don't know what's giving it that structure. And there's loads of vanilla seeds, but I can barely taste vanilla. And it's got a sort of chestnut puree mm. texture. Texturally, this is a disaster. I think Matthew must have used all his sugar on his main course, because this needs more sugar. Pastry that tastes of cheese and sugar, which is not caramelised enough. But I don't know what that ice cream's supposed to be. It's got a texture of, of, of Play-Doh. I'm completely and utterly exhausted. That was intense. There is just no time whatsoever for doing anything other than absolutely sticking rigidly to the procedure. The second you step out from that, you are behind and you're gonna miss the deadline. And yeah, that was a nightmare. Interesting day today, if you like main courses. Not great, if you're a fan of puddings. Quite a few mistakes in the room. Oh, mistakes, crying out loud, John, they were coming thick and fast. We were knee deep in them. Matthew made a fish dish. There was sugar at the bottom of the potatoes. It was very strange. Why would you do that? Maybe it's a scientific thing. Maybe it was an experiment that went wrong. The vanilla ice cream wasn't ice cream at all. Then it was made with agar agar, so it was sort of sticky and gluey. In my mind, that's it. Yeah, 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 Matthew's gone. Fran made her own pasta, and that she made well. All in all, was it was a decent dish. I really, really enjoyed Fran's chocolate and pear tart. Fran needs a bit of refinement, I think, and a bit more intensity of flavour and everything. But she's got skill, we've seen that now. Oh, I think Fran stays. Right, good, we've got Fran. Now we have to decide between Ella and Sam. I was worried about the constituent parts of Sam's main course, but... It was a lot, lot better than I thought it was going to be. Everything was made and cooked very, very well. As for the dessert, the custard was curdled and it was not very nice at all. Ah! I've cooked as well as I think I can cook under what could only be described as like some of the most intense pressure that can be dished out in a kitchen. And I've got two plates of food up that I'm happy with and that I'd give my nan. So if I'd give them a nan, they're good enough for somebody else. <laughs> Ella's proved to me she can deliver delicious food. We had a really good venison dish. For me, probably one of the nicest things I've eaten in this round. But at the same time, that banana tart was a disaster. It was a banana disaster. It was. I'm feeling pretty annoyed with myself right now for making what I would consider a rookie mistake. If I go through to the next round, that's not going to happen again. Do you know who you want? Yeah. It's a little risky, but, but I know who I want. At this stage of the competition, under that sort of pressure, you all did pretty well. There was a promise. Our first quarter-finalist... ..is Fran. <sighs> Thank you.
our second quarter finalist. Is Ella. <laughs> Gentlemen, sorry. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm obviously a little bit disappointed, but I'm actually slightly relieved to have gone out because. I don't think I could have stood there and carried on doing that for weeks on end. What an achievement to get anywhere near the show. What an achievement to cook for three past winners. What an achievement to get picked as Greg's lunch. It was incredible, like really, really, really good. <laughs> We're in the court final. We're in the court final. <laughs> Good little dance. I know. <laughs> I am just so completely happy right now. This is like all the Christmases into one big Christmas. I I cannot believe I've gone through to the quarterfinal and I'm so happy. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe that. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's such a good feeling. It feels overwhelming, exciting, like the future's just opened up massively and uh, I'm a quarterfinalist. Next time, five more cooks battle it out for a place in the quarterfinals. That's really not gone well, actually. I'm really impressed with this. <laughs> Frankly, I don't want to eat any more of it. <laughs>